Hey guys. Um, so for this next part of the assignment, you have to um, generalize the given code so that you can do more than just two threads. So in the last video, we talked about how two threads work, and that's with the given code. And basically, just as a refresher, when we draw our stack, you start with some main function. and that's always thread 0. Then you call spawn on my spawn thread. That saves 0 stack pointer by calling set jump down here. And then it creates this big S array, which moves our stack pointer up here. And then it calls set jump again to save one stack pointer up here. And this way, um, when we return from spawn, zero s stack pointer can grow up and one stack pointer can grow up and they don't interfere with one another um, because one can never go under that line. And we give it enough space so that zero never overwrites one. So we wanted to generalize this to more than just uh, thread zero and one. The picture we want is something like this, where you save two stack pointer at some point up here and then three stack pointer at some point up here and then so on and so you want all of these to have this like same cushion so that they can grow upwards and not interfere with each other um, and then you want each of these chunks to have a size of stack size bytes. And stack size is just a constant that we give you. Stack size bytes. And how you do that is by creating this char array that we call S that has stack size elements. Because if you remember, a char is one byte. And when you multiply that by the number of elements, which is stack size, you get stack size bytes, which is the size that we want. Okay, cool. So, how can we get this kind of more general version where each thread gets its own little cushion? What if we reuse the code we have right now? Uh, let's see, let's draw a stack again. Something like this. Okay. So if we reuse the code we have right now, remember we start with main. And main is always thread zero. The thread that you start with is always, always thread zero. That's your initial thread. So this is thread. Zero, always. And now let's assume that thread zero spawns thread one. Again, we know that this works already. What will happen is that we'll call spawn, and then that'll save zero stack pointer down here. It'll create this S array, which will move our stack pointer up here, then we'll call set jump and say one stack pointer up here. Okay. And then we'll return from spawn. And then zero stack pointer will go from here. Cool. That looks good. Okay. So now, what if thread zero again spawns another thread? We'll call that thread two. So what will happen is, remember, zero stack pointer is here, so it will call spawn down here. It will create the same S array, right? And then it will call set jump up here and call that two stack pointer. Notice that where one stack pointer was saved and now where we're saving two stack pointer are the same locations. And so basically these two will overwrite each other. So. Up here. 
which is really bad. That is not what we want. Okay. What if instead of it being threat 0 spawning threat 2, we made it be threat 1 that spawned threat 2? Well, what that would work is, how that would work is we'd, we'd go to thread 1, and thread one stack starts here. We'd call spawn. That would create the SRA up here, right, because the stack pointer started here. And then it'll call set jump, and so two stack pointer would be saved up here. And this is what we want, right? This would work. But, the problem is that we can't really guarantee that it'll work that way. So we can't guarantee that thread t, just to generalize, will always spawn, always thread t plus 1. And so because of that, this doesn't work. Reusing the current code doesn't work. So this doesn't work. Because you should allow thread 0 to spawn thread 2, or to spawn thread 3, or then even, because you can reuse um, thread IDs, you could have something like thread 5 spawning thread 2. Um, so you can't just say, alright, I'm going to force it so that 0 always spawns 1, and 1 always spawns 2, and 2 always spawns 3. It, it doesn't work that way. Any thread can call my spawn thread to spawn any other thread. Um, it doesn't have to be always like the next ID. Okay. So... What can we do? Well, one thing you could do is, like, calculate the right address. Or somehow figure out the difference between your ID, like the spawning thread's ID, and the ID of the thread you're about to create, and then, like, create the right size S, or somehow jump to that position, and, like, calculate the address. Um, but that is really, really complex. And it's not really a good idea. You might accidentally overwrite stuff, or you might, like, accidentally sec fault because you calculated it wrong and you're overwriting things that you shouldn't be. And then what about the case when, like, 5 spawns 0? Like, then you have, like, negative stuff, and, 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 and this is, like, a huge mess. So you should not try to do it that way. It's really, really complicated. So instead, let's go back and look at this picture. This is the picture that we want. And so the idea is that you want to think about how to have this picture how to have this picture already set up. So that you don't have to do it every time you call my spawn. So when you spawn. Okay? So think about how you might be able to do that. How you might be able to have that picture already set up so that you don't have to do it when you spawn. Okay? So when you spawn, you, you like that's already set up for you, so you don't have to worry about that part of it, the stack part anyway. Okay, um, so that's all I'm gonna say for this part. I know it's a little vague, so if you have any questions, feel free to come to office hours, and then I'll give you a little bit more detail on how exactly you can you can get this going.